Hi guys, Josh Stern here. Thanks again for watching the video blog. I want to talk to you today about how to avoid home buyer's remorse. Yeah, you're going to get it because each and every home I have ever bought, I've gone through this period of cold sweats that the industry happens to call home buyer's remorse. And it's going to happen to you too. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to break out your wants and your needs list. You probably developed a wants and needs list before purchasing the house. So find it, review your notes. All right, top 10, that's five wants, five needs, and realize that most people only find five of those things. Uh, or. I should say rather, they're going to own five homes before they hit their retirement homes. That means you're going to find five or six of these things that are on your list if you're a first time home buyer. All right, so break out that list and ask yourself, does the home include the most important things on the list? What qualities made the house you chose stand out from the others you looked at? Did you find many houses that met your needs or was this one a rarity? If you can back out of the contract, is it realistic to think that you're going to find a house that's better? Maybe a five, maybe a six, maybe a seven, all right? What, a, what was so special about this house just a few days ago that has now changed? I mean, really changed, all right? Analyzing the facts that led you to the home will help you sort out your feelings about the purchase, all right? Was it truly a poor choice or would you be nervous moving forward on any house? So here are four scenarios that bring on buyer's remorse. First is um, just understanding that if you are having discussions with family and friends, they usually mean well, <clears throat> but it's not uncommon for family and friends to question your choice and what you paid for it, especially if it's your first home. Um, and they're seasoned pros, right? But do they really know the market? It may have been years since they bought a property themselves, and if that's the case, they probably aren't quite in touch with current prices. They might even live in another part of the county, the country, the area, in an area where maybe housing costs are a fraction of what you can expect to pay at your particular location. Let's face it, parents rarely think a house is good enough for their children. You can't compare your parents' home purchase to your home purchase today, right? How about continuing to look at houses? It's a big mistake. Just stop looking at other houses unless you feel like the contract has a good chance of falling apart. You're not sure the appraisal will be satisfactory, the home inspection might uncover serious repair issues. Those might be good reasons. So real estate agents who offer no guidance can be a problem. Some agents don't guide their buyers through the closing process and so questions and doubts pop up and the agents aren't around to provide answers and assure the buyers that what they're feeling is normal. Unanswered questions can put buyers in a panic mode, especially when it's their first home. Panic leads to doubt and ultimately buyer's remorse. Contact your agent and others that are involved in your closing whenever you have a question. It's their freaking job to help you. How about your own doubts? Nothing in life is actually certain. We tend to think about the uncertainties even more whenever we make important commitments. Bottom line is when you buy a house, you're going to go through that weird cold sweat uh, home buyer remorse experience, right? Stay tuned into this thing. If you have questions, you're not getting answers, feel free to give me a call, send me an email. We're here to help.